So first up, Jürgen, thank you. It's uh, been a while since we've spoken. I think it's just over 12 months since you left Hertha Berlin. Tell us, what have you been up to? Well, I think in the world of football, a lot of things are going on. I'm, I'm very happy to work here in the United States with ESPN on uh, on kind of a couple of different fronts. One is their coverage of the German Bundesliga, the coverage of the Serie A. But then obviously we always talk about the Premier League. We talk about the European competitions. So I'm uh, constantly involved in the game. I know what's uh, what's happening in all the different places. So it's it's exciting time for football. Uh, just looking over your left shoulder, I can't believe it, Jürgen. It's coming up to 25 years since you captained Germany to success in the Euros at Wembley. You lifted the trophy. Gareth Southgate's just named his squad for this year's tournament. How do you see England's chances going into that? Well, I personally, I mean, I was uh, in Russia. I had the pleasure there um, to follow the English games and... and uh, um, I was very, very surprised and positively surprised, impressed, you know, by the performance of England in the World Cup. And I think he put the standard now really high. So I would rate England definitely in the top four of the European Championship this summer. Um, obviously, you need a little bit of luck at the end, you know, if you can get it all the way to the final and then win the final. But, but uh, they are certainly among the top four for the tour tournament, in my opinion. Then, of course, before the Euros, you've got the Champions League final. What's your prediction for that? <laughs> Yeah, we, we kind of speculate that up and down as well here in the United States. And it's obviously, it's a very exciting final. I mean, it's an all English final. Um, I, I think Man City played a, a fantastic uh, season under Pep Guardiola already. I mean, since a couple of years, you see the growth of that of that club and the team and and the type of football they are playing. And uh, uh, so you cannot, you, you have to be a fan almost of them in a certain way. Uh, I, I thought they played a tremendous good season, so I see them as a slightly favourite um, above Chelsea. But it will be it will be a, an exciting final. Of course, it's the second time, Jurgen, in three years that two Premier League teams have been involved in the Champions League final. Does that show? You, what does that tell you about the strength of the Premier League? Well, that tells you a lot about the strength of the Premier League because uh, uh, the clubs are doing a fantastic job in recruiting, obviously in getting the top players from around the world into the Premier League, but mi mix them with the, the, yeah, the Britain players, basically English players or players coming from, from Ireland or from, from Scotland in the, in the league as well. Um, and that works very, very well. I mean, the infrastructure is set, you know, since I would say uh, since the 96 European Championship, the infrastructure is outstanding. Obviously, a couple of new uh, models came, uh, like stadiums. And if you look at the Spurs Stadium, which is a, a state of the art, um, and so everything is set really for success. And all the teams are very driven; they're all very ambitious. And the drama about the relegation is as exciting as the drama of who's winning the Premier League, or who gets in the Champions League, who gets in the European spot. So, so no, I mean, from a global perspective, the Premier League deserves a lot, a lot of compliments. They're on the right track since years. Uh, they are the role model at, at the moment in world football. You speak so passionately about the Premier League. You obviously miss it. <laughs> no, we always, I mean, watching Premier League, being in contact with my former teammates at Spurs, you know, knowing a little bit what's going on in all the different places. It's, it's exciting. I, I, I talk a lot to the coaches, uh, specific coaches that work in that environment. So, um, no, it's 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 fun. It's uh, obviously it's been a very very tough ride for everyone in the world with COVID. Um, you know, not seeing the fans in the stadium for so long has been really hard to accept because it's not the same game without the fans. You need the fans in the stadium, especially with the atmosphere that you have in the English stadiums. You know, where the fans are so close by the pitch, they are there. You know, you can see pretty much that the people in the first row, the kids, kind of smiling all over their faces when they see the ball rolling out. Um, so, so now, step by step, getting back to normal, uh, having the fans back in the stadium next season will give it an, a completely different picture again, thankfully, everywhere. Um, so, but throughout this pandemic, the, the Premier League has done a, a great job, you know, still, I mean, uh, you have to react always to different situations, you know, sometimes a, a team had a couple of COVID cases, you have to put them in quarantine, uh, some games you have to cancel, you have to postpone them, it, it came into the fact that some teams had to play almost every two days, uh, over maybe a period of 10 or 12 days. Um, but the way they manage it, but the way in general European leagues manage it, the Bundesliga as well, I think they did that really well, um, has been a huge challenge. So now getting back to normal in the upcoming season is, is just fantastic. But the, the standard is set by the Premier League in terms of quality. 
um, and uh, um, and it will be interesting to see if they can keep it up uh, also next year. Hey, Jürgen, we can't let you go without talking about Tottenham. What do you make of the current <laughs> situation there at the moment? Well, obviously, it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been a roller coaster for Spurs this year. You know, I mean, in the beginning they were on the top. And we all started to dream, <laughs> obviously. And and I'm working here for ESPN. I kind of uh, always hold up, you know. You can see this the scarf there, <laughs> yeah, the, the the Spurs colors uh, in all my conversations with the rest of the the team, the rest of the pundits. And um, obviously, at the end, uh, uh, thankfully, we got into the Conference League. At least there's some little kind of credit to the season that at least you play European football next next year that was that was very important but in general obviously it's been a tough tough ride you know my my personal hope is really you know that uh, things will stabilize um obviously we we all went through these couple of crazy weeks with the creation of the super league um or the planned creation of the super league and that fell fell flat you know obviously um um, but it uh, created huge, huge damage. You know, these uh, six English clubs and then the three Italian and three Spanish clubs created a, a situation. Unfortunately, they, it, it, I don't think it was their intention by no means, but they created a situation of loss of trust, uh, loss of credibility uh, with the fans, with the coaches, with uh, the players, uh, because nobody knew about it when it came out. And this to fix... Um, is very difficult. So you need to rebuild basically those relationships uh, with the players, with the, the coaches, with oh, especially with the fans. So there's a lot of work to do. Tottenham was one of those clubs. So there, I mean, obviously we see the pictures as well when the fans are upset in front of the stadium when the, with the protest uh, happening. So all I wish is that they, they kind of regroup, they find the stability, they find their own identity again, which is very important, especially in terms of uh, Spurs, which is known um, as an attacking, you know, fast paced type of football style of play. You know, it's always been famous through amazing players that played throughout the history of Spurs. You know, you, you talk about Ozzy Ardiles, about Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne, and many, many other ones. They are entertaining. You know, that's what the Spurs fans want to see. They want to see entertainment. They want to, you know, rather kind of lose four three than winning one nil. You know, that's that's up to Arsenal winning one nil. But we like we rather we rather score goals. No, but but obviously there is now. I think you left one name off that list, Jurgen, uh, of players. But listen, it's obviously very close to your heart, the club. I know Gary Mabbott, your former captain there. He's still one of your closest friends. You're in regular contact with him. If the call did come from Daniel Levy, Jurgen, you know, come back, help us out. Is that something that would interest you? Oh, I mean, definitely you would entertain it, no doubt about it. I mean, if you if a call comes from Spurs, and then many call came because I have a good relationship with Daniel Levy over the years, you know, it was at the reopening of the stadium uh, and special events, you know, I'm there. He has my number. He can call me <laughs> anytime. Uh, no, always being in touch and uh, doing some stuff with Spurs is for me is something special. Uh, I had the best time of my life there doing my two spells. The second spell was a bit more difficult because we fought relegation suddenly. The first spell was a little bit easier. But no, definitely Spurs uh, is something that you always would consider. Um, I mean, in the football world, things happen so fast. You know, who would have thought that suddenly Jose is gone overnight? You know, the, two weeks later, he signs for his Roma. You know, then po Pochettino is gone. And then, you know, now he's at Paris. And that's that's how football works. You know, it, you never know what happens overnight. I never thought I coached Germany uh, or the United States or Bayern Munich. So, so you got to ha have always an open mind. You have to always think about newer challenges, new things. So so why not Spurs? Uh, Jürgen, when you were playing at Tottenham, you were one of the top strikers in Europe. You felt at the time you just, you had to leave when Bayern Munich came calling. Harry Kane now finds himself in a similar situation. Do you feel any sympathy for Harry, but also some sympathy for Tottenham, who, by all accounts, are desperate for him to stay? Oh, no, I feel sympathy for both sides, absolutely, especially um, Harry, who is kind of really the, the, the flag of the club since so many years. You know, he's, he's done so many things for the club, scored so many goals. I mean, he's, he's the captain of England going down the European Championship, um, he's, he's a, a, a fantastic player and obviously the market is out there 
for him. You know, teams would 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 grab him right away, and they probably would put down a lot, a lot of money for Harry. Um, I personally, and I mentioned that several times here at my work with ESPN. I, I really personally hope he will stay. Uh, at Spurs and he continues his career, but I also can understand him. I mean, I was in that situation um, in 95. Um, I badly, I mean, I was a couple of years older than him at that, maybe three years older. Um, and I badly wanted, you know, silverware. And uh, and it worked out that way. I went to Bayern Munich, I won the UEFA Cup, I won the German Championship and, 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 and so on. Um, but I think the most important part now is that uh, you need to sit down with Harry and you need to discuss his situation and you need to lay out things, how it can be obviously continuing his, his career with Spurs, how the roster will look like for next season. You know, maybe who can come in, who can uh, kind of give it another one or two or three uh, important puzzle pieces to the roster and make the squad even stronger. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I think there are a lot of talks to be made with, with the roster itself. I mean, you talk about not only Harry Kane, because when Harry would decide to leave, then you have a little bit of a problem because then, you know, maybe a son says, you know, hold on, you know, I scored 17 goals this season as well. You know, I might, I might move on then as well. And, you know, and, and uh, so it's, it's a good group of, of, of players. There's no doubt about it. That's why they were on top of the Premier League in the first couple of months. Um, so the quality is there. It needs a bit of uh, uh, fixing it up in a certain way, but the, the key figure in this whole picture is definitely Harry Kane. So you've got to do everything possible to keep him at White Hart Lane. Jürgen, as always, it's been great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>